Thank you, Garza, and uh, thank you everyone for coming tonight. It's really um, so happy to see so many people here. Um, and I'm really excited to tell you about um, a new study that we're about to launch, uh, launch on rectal microbicides. And this is really exciting because this is actually San Francisco's uh, first uh, rectal microbicide study, and we're um, happy to be part of it. So what I, uh, in the next 10 minutes or so, um, what I'm going to do is just very briefly talk about PrEP, just to make sure everyone knows about um, oral uh, PrEP, where, where we've uh, done, had a lot of breakthroughs recently. Um, talk a little bit more about the background on rectal microbicides, why we need them and how they work, and what we know so far about them. Um, and then tell you a little bit about MTN017, the study that we're about to uh, start. Um, so I think many people in this room probably know, but um, uh, there have been an, several studies over the last few years that have been testing um, oral, an oral pill, uh, Truvada, for HIV prevention. Um, and over the last few years, we've seen several studies show that, in fact, this medication can work to prevent HIV. And the FDA, uh, last year in July, approved this medication, Truvada, um, a daily pill, um, that's typically used for HIV treatment. Um, it was approved for prevention in HIV negative people um, for both men and women. It was really a breakthrough uh, um, that happened. Um, and so now there are a number of projects that are actually looking at how can we roll out PrEP in the community. And as people probably know, in San Francisco, there's a demonstration project uh, known as a demo project which is taking place at the STD, the city clinic, um, which is enrolling uh, people into that project. Um, now, that's great that we have oral Truvada. We have uh, PrEP for prevention, um, but we do need other options. Um, and that's because some people may not be able to um, tolerate oral Truvada. Um, most people tolerate it fine, but some people do have some side effects to it. And, um, and a small number of people can affect your kidneys. Um, and also, some people might not prefer, may not prefer to take um, a daily uh, pill. Um, and so there uh, needs to be other prevention options. And just like you can't have only one pair of shoes, um, you uh, definitely need, uh, people need more prevention options and no one size fits all. So why rectal microbicides? Um, we do know that unprotected receptive anal sex or having um, anal sex as a bottom um, is uh, the, the highest risk sexual activity for getting HIV. Um, we've seen a couple of animal studies um, suggest that rectal microbicides can be effective in preventing HIV. Um, and applying the drug rectally um, actually gets the drug to where we think it needs to be. Um, so for an oral pill, you have to swallow the pill. It has to get absorbed into your body and go in your bloodstream and then um, get to the rectal tissues. With, it, with a gel, if you apply it right there, then you can get actually much higher concentrations of the drug um, where we think it needs to go. Um, and also, um, there's, it's likely that there's um, less drug being absorbed into the body so that um, people might have fewer side effects than if they were taking an oral uh, medication. Um, and then finally, people use lube uh, for anal sex, and so um, it could actually enhance sexual pleasure and be something that people actually want to use. Um, and uh, uh, you know, these are a number of lubes that um, are on the market that um, you know, hopefully one day these, um, this, this uh, rectal microbicide could be incorporated into something that people are already using. So how do, how do microbicides work? Um, they work in a variety of different ways. Um, and what we're looking at here um, is the lining of either the vagina or the rectum. Um, and you can see that this is the virus here, HIV, that um, can penetrate the layer of protective layer of cells and get into the body and infect uh, uh, cells um, right underneath that layer. And microbicides can work in a couple um, different ways. <laughs> Oh, great, okay. Um, yeah, uh, so it can actually serve as a physical barrier uh, to HIV getting in. It can prevent people from getting STDs, which um, uh, increase the likelihood that people will get HIV. And then the microbicides can actually have medications that can block the virus from getting into cells and um, or uh, replicating or multiplying within cells. So, the microbicide field actually uh, had a lot of work done with vaginal microbicides in women. And initially, there were a number of studies that were done um, with different, pro different products. Um, sorry, I think I... 
um, uh, different gels, which actually, unfortunately, didn't, didn't work to prevent HIV. And so people um, uh, try, thought we should try something else, and they thought, why don't we try actually putting in anti-HIV medications um, that are used for treatment? Could these uh, medications be put into the gels to prevent HIV? And so they tried that with the medication tenofovir in a study called Caprisa um, 004. Um, and that was a regimen where women used the gel before and after sex. Um, and that study was successful. It showed a 39% reduction in HIV infections in that study. Now, there was a, large, there was a different study called VOICE, which actually tested um, a daily uh, use of the uh, vaginal gel, and that study unfortunately did not show that the gel was effective, um, and we're still trying to figure out why that didn't work, and maybe that um, that people weren't using the gel as uh, consistently as they should have been, um, or uh, other um, maybe other reasons. So the idea was that could we take this vaginal gel and actually test it rectally uh, and use it for, um, as a rectal microbicide? And there was a study called MTN. MTN stands for the Microbicide Trials Network um, 006, which looked at um, the vaginal tenofovir gel used rectally. And what they found that it actually wasn't very well tolerated. Um, and you can see that this is the, in red is the tenofovir, the blue uh, placebo uh, gel. And you can see that um, fewer participants in the study liked the gel compared to the placebo. There's more discomfort, and a lot of it was GI stomach um, uh, or uh, intestinal symptoms. Um, uh, and so it, it wasn't as well tolerated. And I think the reason why it wasn't well tolerated is, um, what is likely due to something called osmolality. And what that is, is the concentration of uh, chemical particles in a solution, how concentrated it is. And it turns out the vaginal gel was, has a very high osmolality, um, about over 3,000. And so when cells get into that fluid uh, or that gel, it, they really don't like it and they can um, actually get disrupted. Um, and so what they did is they reformulated this gel um, to a reduced glycerin gel that has a lower concentration or lower osmolality, um, and so we think that, that that cells will be happier and people will have less um, tolerability issues. And in fact, when they tested that in um, the MTN007 with this reduced glycerin formulation, that um, a lot of symptoms were reduced. And so this is showing abdominal pain, um, rectal urgency, meaning you have to go to the bathroom quickly, bloating, nausea, diarrhea, that you can see that the rates of people reporting that were much lower with the rectal formulation, or reduced glycerin formulation. So, um, so the MTN017, the study that we're about to do, is going to use this reduced glycerin uh, formulation uh, as part of the study. Um, and so this is the first phase two study, so it's um, uh, uh, past the initial phase of testing um, of a rectal microbicide uh, for HIV prevention through receptive anal sex, and so that's really exciting. And the goals of this study <clears throat> are to look at whether this gel is safe and acceptable uh, for use. Um, we'll also look at adherence, how well people use the uh, product over time, as well as um, how it might affect people's sexual activity. Um, and this study is designed to provide the safety data that we need to go the next step of phase three study to actually see whether this works for prevention. Um, and so the the study is actually testing th um, three different um, regimens, uh, and each person in the study actually um, will cycle through all three of these regimens. And that is um, using the rectal gel daily, using the rectal uh, gel just before and after sex, um, and that's um, up to 12 hours before sex, and then as soon as possible after sex, but within 12 hours after sex. Um, and then also comparing it to oral Truvada, um, which we know has um, been proven to prevent HIV, and that's on a daily basis. And um, well, after each um, cycle of testing the product, we'll ask people, did they like the product, um, and would they want to use it in the future? And this just shows the design of the study that um, it's called a randomized crossover design. And what that means is that people will be randomly assigned to one of six different um, sequences of getting the products. Um, and so, you could, for example, if you were in group one, you would start by taking the tablets um, daily for eight weeks. You have a one-week break. 
um, and then you take the gel daily, have a one week break, and then take um, the gel just before and after anal sex. Um, and so the other arms are just different um, orders of those, um, those regimens. Um, so <laughs> this shows where the study is happening. Um, and um, you can see that it's, there, uh, there are six study sites um, where the study is happening. Um, San Francisco, Boston, Puerto Rico, Peru, South Africa, and Thailand. So it's an international study. Um, we'll be enrolling overall about 186 participants um, and 25 here in San Francisco. And this just shows the um, schedule of visits. Um, the whole study has about 10 study visits, um, which take place over seven months. So it's actually a pretty, sh compared to some of our other studies, it's actually a shorter study. Um, and um, in general, people come in, um, the colors refer to each um, cycle where you're testing one product or one regimen. Um, so <clears throat> you come in um, um, uh, four weeks into the, uh, taking the product and then four weeks after that you take a break and then um, it repeats with a different type of uh, regimen. Um, in terms of who's eligible to participate, um, we're looking for sexually active, HIV uninfected, um, men who have sex with men and trans women, age 18 um, or old, and older. Um, and people generally have to be in fairly good health, um, not have any um, acute um, sexually transmitted diseases, have normal kidney and liver function and blood counts, and also be hepatitis B and C negative. Um, in terms of study procedures, uh, people come in for regular HIV testing and testing for sexually transmitted infections. Um, we have um, wonderful counselors and um, uh, people get counseling in the study. Um, and as, as well, see a clinician for um, physical exam and rectal exams, including um, the rectal swab, which you saw in the video. And, uh, and then uh, also testing for urine and blood tests. And then actually in this study, we, we are testing people for, um, to see whether they have evidence of the drug in their blood, and we actually are giving that information back to people um, in the study. There's also a computerized questionnaire. Um, and another unique feature of this study is it involves use of SMS um, text messages um, to help track how people are taking the medication um, so that, that people respond to on a daily basis. So um, we are... Uh, we will be looking for volunteers for this study. We're uh, probably going to start recruiting sometime in September, uh, although the timeline's still a little um, up in the air, but it's very soon. And the enrollment will be six to nine month, uh, six to nine month period. And I think that is it. So thank you for your attention.